Do you think you're unbeatable? No one's unbeatable. What's it going to take to beat you? It's going to take what this was not around today. And it's going to be a long time, I believe, for anyone to yet to come up and beat Mike Tyson. Kids who get into trouble usually have a great deal of pent-up energy and they don't know what to do with it. But Mike Tyson was one of those kids. It was the great boxing trainer, Gus D'Amato, who finally turned Mike's life around. He took him under his wing and rechanneled Mike's energies into boxing. Come on, you bitch! You scared coward! You got man enough to fuck with me! You can't last two minutes in my world, bitch! Look at you scared now, you ho! Scared like a little white pussy! Scared of the real man! D'Amato feels that Tyson will be the next Muhammad Ali, and he should know. Ali was also one of his students. In life, you can absorb almost anything if you are able to anticipate it and prepare psychologically to accept it. Discipline enables a person to do that which needs to be done, which is also my definition of a professional, no matter how he feels with it. Tyson, when I first had him, he was 190 pounds, nothing but muscle, 12 years old. Okay, that's what he was. But that's what he was. I mean, that's what God made right. him. The physical part of boxing is so minor that most people would never believe it or accept it. Because in my opinion, the mind and emotions are about 75% of boxing. Mike Tyson weighing 210 pounds has an ex exceptionally good record. He had a, maybe a dozen fights in the Junior Olympics Championship, and he knocked out every fighter he fought to win the national championship twice. Tyson not only has a very hard, terrific punch in either hand, but he has developed elusive qualities and has the most important quality, the will to win. He has the desire to win. He wants to be the best. And with a fellow with this type of competitive spirit, plus the knowledge that he has gained and the punching power, I can't see him lose. Potentially, just how good can you be, Mike? Have you thought much about it? Well, you, you're always learning. I don't think anyone is invincible. Joe Lewis, perhaps the closest thing to invincible. But myself, I put in a lot of hours training, and I give, my, I give it all I have. And if there's a better man out there, which I believe there isn't at the moment, I'd be glad to just say, you're the better man. I'm from a bad neighborhood in Brooklyn, and you know, living in Brooklyn, things happen, and then it goes further and further and beyond, so I won't even talk about that. And eventually, I met a friend that knew Cuss, and that's how this situation happened. I feel I was born to fight because I have no other interest in anything else. Anybody's a fighter in their own right. You're a fighter, I'm a fighter, but everybody don't get up every morning and run. Everybody don't go to the gym every morning. And everybody don't have enough discipline to wait in the locker room for two hours or three hours, then go in the ring and do what they've been taught all those years in the gym. And so that's what separates a champion from a mediocre fighter. What about talent? Talent? I don't believe in talent. Well, some people, they have talent. That's it's good. It helps when you have talent. As long as you have a lot of determination and willpower, that's all you need. And you have to have the will to win. Do you think 5'11 is going to be an obstacle to your success? Not at all. I think you're a fighter, and I don't think anything's a disadvantage if you have the heart, the determination, and the will to win. You can be 6'6", 6, 6'10", 6, 6, foot, if you got the ability, I don't think it's a disadvantage. Why have you been staying so active as we take a look at this? I mean, you, you, you have been fighting almost every 10 days, every two weeks. Well, um, I feel to be the best in your sport, you must do it often. You can't box once a month or once every three months and stay sharp. The gym is good. It's good to work in the gym. It's good to get boxing. And it's good for, uh, you know, training and endurance. But nothing's like being in the ring and fighting. Mike, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this I, in seven I or eight seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend. 
and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. I never had an ego. I was never really jealous of anybody. I never really thought most of myself. But when I met Cuss and I started talking to Cuss, um, he made me believe that I was a god. There was nobody that could reach the core like Cuss could. No one could um, inspire me. Cuss would say say that, do you hear this? Because Cuss had a really problem. He had this really... Um, Make them mean the evil thing. Let me tell you something. You, you, all the prophets, all the gods you ever know about, if they had a son, they come to beat my fighter. You know why? Because he's my fighter. That's, um, because he's an interesting guy. He had the concept of fear down to a science. And most of his fighting was mostly psychological. He believed um, physical, physical actuality of boxing was only 10% when the mind was 90%. You always believe in improving yourself and strengthening your mind. You don't believe in that um, your body um, only purpose was to carry your brain. Even if um, fighting was um, your, your opponent's surrender, his total destruction. And he didn't think of it as, um, even though he said it was savage and ferociously, you had to do it in such a relaxed and calm state. A really scientific way of destroying he enjoyed hurting the opponent. He wanted them to never have a chance to believe they could beat you. Everything was that um, I'm invincible, I'm a savage, I'm ferocious. I'm the smartest savage. Sophisticated animal, smart animal. The lion and the fox. You know I me, mean? I could also, I could beat the vicious guys and I got smart the slick stick. So I was, um, I'm pretty much didactic in that, that apart. I love war. I love the act of war. I love the um, I love the players in war. I love the philosophy of war. There's a quote in Machiavelli, the Prince, and when they say, after you defeat the king and you cut off his head, you be audacious and you say what you're going to do to the next ruler and the next um, prince that you're going to conquer, and that allows them to be intimidated. You're scared, coward. You got man enough to. I was born with great perception. If it came from my street life, from being locked up for stealing and um, facing unbelievable odds as a young kid, I had great perception. And once I watched um, these guys fight, I just knew it was a matter of time, but I knew I, uh, my time would soon come. When this is over, everybody's going to know my name. And the people that I fight after him, oh, they're going to fear me. And, um, that's pretty much um, how my reign consists of just fear. And on occasion, some guys like him, who's a tough guy, they would try to fight back. And that would just um, allow me to excel at an extremely high level. I never wanted to be obscure. I was born in obscurity and I never wanted to deal with that again. I know I would, um, I would attain my goal before it existed. I knew that. I knew I would be champ of the world before I died. I knew I wasn't going to die before I became champ. I was just disappointed that I didn't kill them back then. That was just my main objective because I wanted to succeed so bad and I felt the fear of not succeeding was, was worse than dying. So I just wanted to make sure they never got up. Nobody in the planet could beat us. That was everything. I, my whole life, he said, best fight in the world, best fight in the world. There's nobody in the planet that could beat me. I could beat anybody in the planet in a fair fight, and that's what I always believed. I must be a descendant of the great warriors of old, all the gods of war, because I'm winning with the most simplest of these. How could these guys even dare fight me? I must be ordained by God. You were the pet project of one of the all-time great trainers, uh, Customato, who passed away uh, just last month. How are you dealing with that? Um, let's see. 
Business-wise, I have no problem coping without him. Emotionally, it's difficult because he was like a stern backbone. Um, he had a lot of belief in me. He gave me the confidence and the belief that I have now, and that's a big asset to my success. Would be overstating the case if I said he basically saved your life? No, not overstating it at all. I don't know why. If even God just came down and gave you a laptop or a computer or a phone and, and said, you have the chance to send an email to Cos, Cosimato. What, what would you write in that email to Cos? Wow, how the, oh shit. How did I do? You just met me, I'm a little kid, he said, you're gonna be the world champ. Yeah, this guy know. I didn't know I was the one. Well, you were a specimen. Mm -hmm. It takes more than that to be a fighter. <laughs>